Surging debt, public debt levels on the continent has raised concerns among central banks in Africa. Nigeria's Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefele has warned in January that rapidly rising debt and a lack of fiscal buffers could threaten economic growth in the country. Meanwhile, the country has also witnessed a drop in its foreign direct investment at under, under a billion naira for a country with over 200 million people. Should this be a cause for concern? I have in the studio with me Osilama Okofo, who is an economist. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thanks for having me. Yes, certainly. Uh, regarding the concerns of the CBN governor, Gordon mm -hmm. Mifeli, particularly about our debt profile, which has drastically been rising. And when you take a look, to, look at our foreign direct investment, it's below a billion dollars, which, I mean, we're 200 million and over here in Nigeria. So should this be a cause for concern? Um, it actually should be. Uh, we are a frontier economy. We are an emerging economy. Um, I mean, it goes without saying that you need all the support you can get from the outside world. Um, actually, with respect to foreign direct investment. Mm. Um, Nigeria, a couple of years ago, was actually the, um, some kind of heaven, some kind of location where investors wanted to come into, right? Actually, after the, um, the process where the government did, you know, uh, some kind of re-energizing of the economy, right? Um, f investors came in. Uh, we were number one in Africa, um, ranked 26th fastest growing in the world. In the world. You know, uh, during the, after the rebasing of the economy. That was the word I was actually looking for. Um, but uh, along the line, we lost, we lost our focus. Um, and that dried up. We stayed there. Um, for investors to come into an economy, uh, certain things need to be in place. The, like I said, the, the environment has to be enabling, where you can then break it down into issues bordering on security, issues bordering on the right macroeconomic policies in place. You read out now that the central bank governor you know, was, was happy on the need for the fiscal leg. At least we need Step buffers. The, if you're spending, uh, you should have... Exactly, because I've always said it, even on this program with you, um, the monetary leg drives the economy. The fiscalists are snoozing. And it's not, it's not going to help us. We are an emerging economy. The fiscal leg should actually drive the process more than the monetarist. And that's not what we're having. You know, a situation where you're not spending, you're not ramping up your... Uh, developmental projects, you won't grow, you won't emerge. You know, what the central bank does essentially, which is a monetary leg now, is to, is to target inflation. And that's what they're doing mostly. An economy that is inflation targeted will not emerge. Because what that means is that growth will suffer. It means that you're not putting in place investment opportunities, you're not, you're not growing the now economy we see our, as it were. inflation rates rising? It would November. rise because the economy is not in a good place. Like one of your correspondents said earlier, it, it, it's not in a good place. Um, I see that is where, again, you see that the value of the local currency is dipping. We, we, I mean, we understand that um, the presidency brought about the Economic Advisory Council mm. who are supposed to take a look at the state of the economy and then, you know, advise the presidency on what should be done. Would you say that we're not seeing the effect of you know, this particular... The Advisory Council has been there even during, since during the time of President Obasanjo. It's not, it's not new. Um, what you have is a situation where maybe policies are put forward, but they are not followed through. Um, it's one thing for you to say, OK, I, this is where we need to go. I'm ad, I, have, I have advice I, as an economic advisor. It's now up to those who, are, who have the power to execute. Sometimes when you take a look at the issues that we have, one would suggest that we have more people problem than when it comes to synergy, we require synergy for all of these you know, ideas to work as well. You see, we've never been a people that are bereft of the right policies and the right ideas. It's, it's, it's a function of execution. Uh, those that are saddled the responsibility of 
ensuring that we move to the next level and not stepping up to the plate. Like I said, macroeconomics, I mean, we're discussing economic. I, I, I'm trying not to veer into the area of politics. Um, you should if you need uh, to. No, I don't want to veer into the area of politics so that I don't seem rather too critical. Um, we, 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 macroeconomics is, is monetary and fiscal. Now you see the central bank governor complaining that one leg is not stepping up to the plate. It's not, I don't think it's you can even talk about the economy without talking about politics because if the political space is not working, then I don't know how the economy would I, work. I wouldn't say the political space is not working, you know. Um, but again, too, like I said, it's it's something it's something that um, affects us in, in virtually in, in every aspect of our lives, right? Uh, people, certain people in in, in 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 power in certain certain situations do not do what they should do. Self-interest does come in rather than the overall interest of the people. I mean, it's, it's a whole lot. I mean, I think it's to a large extent, um, you know, who we are and, and how we do things, you know. Uh, but like I said, we've never been bereft of the right policies. We've never been bereft of the right people to, you know, push the the right agenda forward. Um, but I think leadership is where we've always fallen short, and, and it's still and it's still continuing. All right, and finally, regarding the, um, our benchmark for the budget was at $57 mm. per barrel. That's for crude oil. And yeah. then we see that um, right now is at $58 per barrel. That's what it's trading at currently. What, what, do you, what issues do you see foresee with this? Uh, well, an increase means we're supposed to have more, right? OK, uh, but you see, it's, it's infinitesimal. It's really infinitesimal. Um, we need a, a lot more than that. To, to happen for us to uh, um, show up our foreign reserve, which has been greatly depleted. We need a lot more than that to grow the internal economy. We need a lot more than that to stop borrowing, both internally and externally. I mean, these are issues. I you know. the yeah, because our economy is usually issue. dependent on crude oil. And if the price of oil is not where it should be right now, Mm. Again, to look at product productivity levels, then uh, that's why we are where we are. In all right, mostly. So, um, because of time, that's all we can have. But thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you very much. Good to see you again.